Mm -hmm. One second, guys. I've got this sharing going on. So what I'm going to do, guys, I'm going to do the first 20 minutes. I'm going to do the presentation on the webinar live with you guys that have joined me live. Um, and I'm also going to put the first 20 minutes on Instagram live. So the guys that want are interested in, can join on there. So just one moment and we get cracking. Hello and welcome to today's webinar on how to supercharge your fitness training. So what I have is jointly on Instagram live we are for the first 20 minutes, we are going to have this recorded on Zoom. So the guys that are joining me on Zoom, they're going to get the, get the whole interaction live for 60 minutes on the webinar. Then what I'll do is over time, I will upload it to the YouTube account so you can look at it in further details and see the slides. So the guys that are joining me live on, on Instagram, this will be uploaded onto Instagram TV and also YouTube later down the line. Okay, so today's topic is gonna to be on five powerful ways to supercharge your fitness. Now, I've taught, talked a lot about fitness over the last number of uh, webinars. So what I'll do is I won't rehash the same content again. I'm just gonna to touch upon it and show you where you can research it a bit more. A lot of trainers out there, a lot of coaches out there are putting fitness and conditioning and cardio into the workout. The goal for me in, in this webinar is to give you usable, actionable information you can implement into your program straight away. So, is this sliding for me? It's not. Oh, my slides have froze there. One second, I'll just change this. Mm -hmm. I'll reactivate that. Always oh, a technical hitch. There we go. So, one second. Okay, so first of all, when it comes to cardio, what we need to know is what are we doing it for? So cardiovascular training, people say to me all the time, oh, no, I don't do cardio, I do loads of cardio. The day you stop doing cardio is the day you die. So we need to know why are we putting cardiovascular training into our program if we aren't trying to improve fitness, well, what is fitness for you? What is fitness for me? What is fitness for an athlete? So the number one thing that people focus on, first of all, is time. Just because you're in the gym for an hour or 60 minutes or 90 minutes or three hours doesn't necessarily mean you're doing cardiovascular workouts. So fitness training isn't always time dependent. There is a principle in training called the FIT principle, frequency, intensity, type, and time. Now, generically across the board, aerobic exercise is exercise you do for a longer period of time. But sitting here talking to you, you guys sitting at home, listen to me, that tends to be aerobic exercise. And we want to be aerobic when we're in a more of a, of a lower intensity state, watching television, where our body is using fat and oxygen at the main fuel source. So when we're in the gym, when we're trying to improve fitness, we need to find out what is fitness for you. And it's not always necessarily do long steady state act exercise for a long period of time. I'm programming that and understanding why we're doing our program, why we're doing this workout, why we're on a bike, why we're on a ski egg, why we're on a rower, why we're outside running, and knowing how that impacts someone's body, the longevity of the joints, the goal of the workout, and how it's affecting our metabolism and our hormonal system. That's when we truly understand whether we're going to help someone's cardiovascular fitness, improve their body composition, improve their sport, or just have fun. So I think we all need to know why we're going into the workout in the first place. Now, cardio training typically tends to be all lower body orientated. Bikes, treadmills, where it's all lower body orientated. The reason being is the larger the muscle group you activate, the more pressure you put on the heart to pump more oxygenated blood around the body. That doesn't mean that all aerobic exercise should be lower body orientated. In my opinion, and we'll talk a lot about this, fitness is muscle specific. And what we mean by that is just because you're fit to run doesn't mean you're fit to cycle. Just because you're fit to cycle doesn't mean you're fit to box. So sometimes people have this, if you want to call it, an understanding that the en engine, i.e. the heart, is the driving force. And the, the heart is not necessarily an engine. What the heart is doing is heart is delivering oxygenated blood to the working muscles in order for them to do their job. Now, that could be the delivery of oxygen, 
that could be the removal of lactate that could be the you know the delivery of, of any nutrient to the muscle you know helping the body bring glycogen from the liver to the muscle and so on so the heart gets elevated secondary to the demand place upon the muscle it's not the other way around so when people are focusing purely on heart rate heart rate the heart is going to be delivering oxygen to the muscle but if your muscle isn't efficient at taking that oxygen up and getting rid of the waste products well that's what that's what we we, we see as compromise or impaired fitness but the muscles that are involved in cycling and stress the same way as running and stress the same way as boxing and stress the same way as doing a, a, being on a rower or a ski egg so then the question has to be, well, uh, what is fitness? Is fitness the ability to run 5K fast? Is the ability to box for an hour? Is it the ability to do a, a fitness class or a spinning class? It's all relative. But if you're doing this form of training for body composition, well, then the goal isn't fitness. Okay, the overall benefit would be you, you might feel cardiovascularly fit to, for the average daily life, but that doesn't mean you're necessarily fit for the sport, fit for an activity, it's fit for daily life. And when I see people move, and I, I, I live quite near the Clontarf seafront, and I see people running up and down the seafront, and I see their knees, and I see their ankles, and I see their lower back when they run, and their arms swing, I'm like, oh my God, the posture. I, I wouldn't let someone squat like that, or step up like that, or leg core with faulty movement patterns. And when you increase the repetition, and you increase the volume of a movement, you magnify the possibility of, of misalignment, of poor recruitment, and of wearing and tearing on the joints. So I'm not, an, I'm not a nice guy when I'm training people in the gym, and I might give you, let's say, 100 squats in the gym, or 200 squats if I'm having a bad day. But when you're outside running for 20, 30, 40 minutes, you're doing 5K, you're doing thousands of repetitions. And unless your ankle, knee and hip are of ideal alignment, of ideal mobility, ideal flexibility and coordination from a muscular recruitment point of view, they may be wearing and tearing on the joints. I like to think that when your car is shaking, when you're driving, you know the steering wheel shakes when your wheels aren't balanced. So for me, when you're doing long distance running, when you're doing a lot of cardiovascular work, alignment, recruitment, balanced mobility, posture control, needs to be essential so for me i like to vary the type of machines that people use and we'll talk a bit about the application of that as we go on next thing i want to talk about is the heart so the heart is a phenomenal indication of intensity when you're doing long steady state cardio when you're doing workouts that that you're getting the activity up like running like cycling or swimming for a long period of time the heart is a good gauge of intensity However, for interval training, and I'm going to separate these guys from high intensity interval training and interval training, which are not the same thing, the heart is not a good indication of intensity. It's a really good indication of density and a really good indication of recovery, but it is not a good barometer of intensity, of how hard you're pushing yourself. Because in, in, uh, in interval training and in high intensity interval training and in what's called shit, super high intensity interval training, the heart isn't the main uh, nutrient delivery mechanism. It's stored uh, creatine and it's stored glycogen and it's anaerobic activity. So when you're doing an anaerobic activity, the heart, as in the, the, the heart rate, is not a good indication of intensity during the set because realize the set might be 30 seconds long or 40 seconds long. But when we see someone's heart rate, it's sleep, it's uh, beats per minute. And those beats per minute are per minute, not per 30 seconds. So yes, it will fluctuate up. And particularly what I would say is the wristbands, the most sensitive we really find, and again, it depends on the brand, but chest straps where the, the, the sensitivity and the proximity to the heart is closer. I'm a big fan of Polar. They're very effective, been along the market for a long time. There is new like Fitbits and whoop bands and O-rings. Yes, I think they're new and they, they, they bring a lot to the game when it comes to heart rate variability, when it comes to strain level, when it comes to sleep assessment. But the sensitivity, particularly when you're doing weight training or boxing or interval training, I don't think it's the same quality of information you get from a chest band so take away there heart rate monitoring is very good for recovery it's very good for density of your workout and it's a very good indication of intensity over a long period of time however if you're doing interval training or a high intensity interval training or super high intensity interval training it is not a good barometer of intensity recovery yes density yes if you're not familiar with these words i'll show you some videos i have on youtube and on instagram you can watch the breakdown what those differentiation between intensity density and so on 
Next thing I talk a lot about, and I think this is crucial to get benefit. And I want everyone listening today to get benefit from each and every workout that they do. And in order for that to happen, we need to have what's called a personalized intensity indicator. And what do I mean by that? For example, if I get onto the what bike right here in front of me, or I get onto an assault bike, I need to know what wattage I need to be able to put out that's hard for me. So 600 watts, 700 watts on the assault bike, maybe it's a thousand watts, I don't know, it depends. But based off my body weight, based off my ability, when I'm doing my 10 or 15 seconds interval or 30 seconds on or 30 seconds off or Tabitha, I need to know what my wattage related to my time is. I can go up and down like this, for 10 seconds. That doesn't mean that it's an anaerobic activity. It, it, it's down to time, but it's also down to intensity. And that intensity needs to be personalized and it needs to be monitored in that workout. So just giving someone 10 seconds of work, 10 seconds off, or a minute on, a minute off, in my professional opinion, is flawed because you have to associate a level of intensity. If it's just general capacity and general fitness and generally get someone sweaty and kick them out of the gym, by all means, do that. But when you take a scientific approach, when you take a personalized approach, when you take the parameters into consideration, it's much easier then to periodize a workout, change to something different when you know where you were. But if you're just doing random on, random off, stop, start, go, st it's not specific enough to the person. You're not going to elicit a specific recruitment of the body. And there's a principle of training called the said principle. Specific adaptations to imposed demands. And what that basically means is if you ask the body a clear question, it would give you a clear response. So I'm asking you to go for 20 seconds on the assault bike at 500 watts with 20 seconds complete recovery, going lower than 50 watts and repeat again 10 times. That is a clear, clear message. The muscular system, the nervous system, the hormonal system, the cardiovascular system will get a set amount of stimulus from that workout. And when you can no longer replicate the wattage that I've asked you, the session is over. Then from that, I can go to the next workout where I'm putting you on a salt bike again, but this time we're doing, you know, maybe 20 seconds of work and it's 700 watts or whatever it may be. But when you have a specific prescription or what's called an exercise prescription, and that's what it's called, people have gone away from that word because it has to be specific to the person, it has to be a prescription. And when you have that prescription, it's easy to change it every single workout. But if your workout says, ah, do a little bit of this and do a little bit of that, well then where do you go to? And in order for the body to adapt to a training stimulus, we need what's called a period of delayed transformation. And I apologize if I'm going off on one guys, but the reason why I'm saying this is, if you keep doing the same training system, the body needs something new to adapt to it. But if you have a set question, you can ask the body a different question every workout. But if you ask 20 questions every workout, well, then it's very hard to move to a different workout because the body sees it as the same stimulus. And the last thing there, the guys will see this on the slides, is a fingerprint. Everybody's training is different. Everybody's response to training is different. People's body weight, leverage, movement mechanics, history is all different. So try to, no, don't try. Pick the exercises that complement your, your client. You build your program around your client, not your client to fit your program. Always. I see women outside running that do not have the joint su support to do running. And they're running for, for weight loss goals. Maybe, I'm not, I'm not going to tarnish everyone with the same brush, or they're running because they want to get their mind away from stuff. And that's brilliant. But yoga, tai chi, pilates are all very good from a mindset point of view. I have a program I'll show you later called the ISO circuit, where people can get the same amount of cardiovascular workout with dramatically less than 10% of the same volume outside running. So if you faulty movement, if you've had a baby and maybe you've lost weight and maybe you've got big boobs and it's not good for you to run, you've got shoulder problems or low back problems, maybe long distance running isn't the way to go. And which we'll talk about when you run, you get better at running. And as you get better at running, you actually get more economical, which means your body burns less calories. So if you're running to get results from it, you're just going to have to keep running more and more and more or forward and further to get the same benefits. So let's move on here. So on the guys and slides, we'll see this. I have a program called the ISO circuit. I have it for two ways. I have it for body composition loss and I have it for MMA fitness. So that video was on YouTube. So it goes go through the number of exercises, how, how long you do a set for, how long would you do a recovery for, and how many sets you would do. So check that out online, and that will explain it for you. 
if you're an athlete, if you're involved in power sports or it's rugby or it's soccer or it's GA or hurling, I have, the very, I have a very similar video. It's called Energy System Training for Power Development. So if you're a trainer out there, I'm not saying you shouldn't write necessarily write programs on how I write them, but sets, reps, tempo, time under tension, walk to rest ratio, total session time, personalized uh, intensity indicator, your recovery gauge, your heart rate, your wattage. You need to understand these components in order to put together the parameters for a personalized program. If this is not you and that's not what you want to do, that's no problem. But if you're giving fitness to clients, if you're giving interval training to clients, we need to understand, we need a solid evidence-based approach to the, the improvement of cardiovascular fitness, body composition, and hormonal health. Over the last number of years, particularly two years with people training at home, I find they're doing the same workouts all the time. And the same workouts all the time will massively bring down, will wear on people from a joint point of view, from a cardiovascular point of view, and also from a hormonal point of view. We need to mix things up. You would never just go to the gym and squat every single day. Actually, a lot of guys avoid that. The same way when you go into the gym, I ask people, what do they do for interval stuff? Jumping jacks, squat jumps, burpees, sled walks, uh, sled runs, prowler runs. And all I hear there is quad, 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 quad. We need to mix things up. I have a Versa climber here, I have a hand bike, I have a ski, I have a ski egg, I have a, a bike egg, I have an assault bike, I have a what bike, I have boxing bags. We've loads of different things. Why people need to be fit in all different movements? They need cardiovascular fitness demanded from different range of motion, the offset wear and tear, mechanical damage, and also to elicit different muscular contractions. What I have is for the guys that are interested out there, I have a course online. It was my very first course I put online in the, in the first lockdown. And what I'm going to do is the guys that are interested in it, I'm going to give a 75% discount off. And all you need is the code SUPERCHARGE, all capitals. And what it is, is advanced fitness and interval training methods for busy executives. So if you're a busy executive, there's tons of programs in there for months on end you can do. If you're a PT or a strength coach, dealing with clients like that, which I'm sure you are, this would give you an understanding of how to put the program together, how to periodize them. And again, it's 75% off and the code is supercharged. All capital letters on onlacyeducation.com. So if I do talk about stuff you're not familiar with, you'll check out all the information online there and we'll cover that with you. If you're dealing with groups and training in rugby teams or soccer teams, I also have a course on modified strongman training, which I've extended a discount because it's a big uh, challenge for fitness guys during the last uh, two, or two years now. So again, there's a certification course there on modified strongman training. And in that, I give you a program on corrective exercise, on interval training, on program design, on group training. So there's five courses in one on that. So check that out, guys. And also that's on onlyaceducation.com. So... Let's get into the slideshow. So program purpose, what is the goal of your program? When you go into the gym, when you go on, on, the, on the road or when you get on your bike, what's the goal? And that's the reason why I say that force is if your goal is just to clear your head, well then don't listen to me, put some music on and off you go. If your goal is body composition, well then let's, let's, let's maximize the time that you're gonna be on that bike for. So let's try to improve your body composition by using your walk to rest ratios, by using your sets, by using your intensity, by using your gears, by using the incline to challenge the body. If it's to improve uh, cycling on the bike, well then we need to have certain re revolutions per minute, certain gear, certain heart rate, certain distance, and so on. So we all need to know what we're doing that for. If you're just going out for a cycle with your wife, with your kids, well, then obviously the intensity is going to be challenged. Or maybe with my wife, I'll just dart off and leave her behind me. But anyway, the goal is we need to know why we're doing the program. Now, when I survey a lot of clients, the number one goal is fat loss, body composition, and improving fitness. And this, this term fitness for me, when I talk to clients, it's just overall fitness. The ability to go through a day-to-day -day activities without any undue fatigue to go shopping, carry the shopping in, lift the kids, lift the grandkids, do movements up and down the stairs without the body aching and paining. And the issue is every time you exercise, you, big, you dig a hole. And that hole is stressing the body, it's stressing the joints. And having a big, broad mixture of fitness allows you the ability to recover and to do your activities day in and day out. So number one, we need to know your program goal. Is it fun? Is it fitness? Is it fat loss? And once we know that, well, then we can put the parameters in place. 
If it's fun, forget about it. If it's mind just to clear the brain, forget about it. But if it's body composition or specific fitness, well, then we need to understand the parameters. We need to put the, together the program. We need to personalize it and we need to periodize it. JD Mack, how many P's in, in one sentence can you say? So next what we have is fitness and fat loss parameters do not match. So if you're getting on the bike to improve your fitness on the bike, it does not align with body composition changes because your fitness on the bike is going to be able to go for longer at a higher pace, burning less calories. That's what getting fit is. If you go outside and run a 5K, every time you run 5K, your cardiovascular fitness will improve. Your heart rate will drop down. Your speed will improve to a certain level. Your stride length, your economy of movement will improve and you'll actually burn less calories the more you do it. So your option then is increase the frequency of how many times you run, increase your intensity, which is only up to a certain level, increase the, the time that you're doing the movement and the type will say the same because it's going to be running each time. So fitness parameters and training and fat loss parameters are not the same. And that's why I said the first thing that we're going to do is decide why we're doing this program, what is the goal, what's the purpose, and then we can put in place the parameters. But you can't say, oh, this workout isn't working for me. I'm not getting any fitter. I'm not getting any leaner. When you haven't ascertained why you're doing it and you're not tracking why you're doing it. There's loads of these trackers now, the Whoop and the Aura Ring and the Fitbits and the Apple Watches that give you feedback. However, again, I know things are evolving relatively fast and we're seeing how effective these biomarkers and this tracking and this reporting is and the haptics that we get from these devices. But for me, and again, I'm a coach, I've got to say this, I think we need a coach. We need someone to, to bounce off. We need accountability. We need support. We need control. We need a, you know, more professional eye looking over our workouts. For some reason, I don't know what it is in this industry when it comes to nutrition and training. You can study for years in university. You can be studying courses and seeing people for 10 or 15 years. But people will look at a magazine or look at a blog online and think they can do it themselves. Uh, I have clients that are, you know, doctors and mechanics, you're not going to just look up a book on surgery or look up a book on how to, you know, change your catalytic converter in your car. Although some people do throw a hand at it. I think when it comes to your body, one suite doesn't give you a cavity. So your program may not necessarily be getting injured. You know, it might not be injured now, but over time, incorrect training, incorrect periodization, not deloading, overtraining will detrimentally damage your joints, which you may not have the ability to, to rehabilitate those or get them back to where they should be. Seek out a coach, whether it be a running coach or a cycling coach, have someone oversee it. So you have a lot, a lot of longevity in your body and you're looking after yourself a bit more. Okay, next one there is fun and fat loss. So we have what's called the return of investment. And I've spoke about this a lot and I've mentioned it in other videos you see on, on my YouTube channel. But when you have an hour to train, if it's, if it's going to be fun, if it's going to go out and play football or play handball or play paddleboard, which I'm looking forward to playing when I hopefully ever get over to Portugal again for a retreat, which you're all welcome to come along. The next time we run one, I'll post it to let you know. It's over there, a bit of fun, whether it be paddleboard outside on the, on the, in the, in the water or it might be swimming. Realize that when you're doing a fun activity, don't classify those as fat loss. And when you start to change your fun activity to try to make a fat loss, then you take the fun out of it. In my opinion, and this is more for athletes, if you're looking to improve body composition, do not use training as a method of improving body composition. Diet alone will do it for you. If you start to train to burn fat, you're training yourself away from your sport. So for example, if you're a boxer and looking to improve, you drop the weight. Caloric deficit and other methods of, of controlling weight are much more beneficial than training in fat loss zone to burn weight. Why? Because when you're training in a fat loss zone, you're mainly training slow twitch muscle fibers. You're doing movements that may not be, be specific to your sport, and you're actually detraining yourself away from your speciality in order to change your body composition. And for me, body com composition should be attained by weight management, by nutritional support, by your sports nutritionist, by your dietitian, by your sports medicine physician to maintain it. But training to lose weight trains you away from your sport itself. Also, when you're training, and also, out there, any athletes out there looking to change body composition in season, particularly soccer players or rugby players, it is not a time to start that journey. Anytime you change your dietary approach, your macronutrients, your splits, your intermittent fasting, your time restricted feeding, whatever you want to say, it will directly hamper performance in the short term. 
obviously long term hopefully it's going to enhance it if you're overseen by and advised by a nutritionist however if you don't for the short term it may uh, in, impact reaction time it may impact cardiovascular fitness recovery regeneration between sports so it's important just Okay, so next what we have here is uh, we're going to get into the actual five tips themselves. So I'll keep this running on Instagram. Hopefully it will you know, keep the information and I'll stop in five minutes or so. So the top five powerful tips when it comes to interval training or cardiovascular training for that matter is interval training is more effective and allows more variety. And what, what, what do we mean by that? If you're doing a block of cardiovascular workout, it tends to be warm up, maintain it, bring it back down again. There is another form of aerobic training that very it's extremely effective. It's called the mass training from Dan Baker. If you don't know who Dan Baker is, if you're involved in team sports, he's an absolute legend and, and a very a gentleman at that. But we'll talk a bit about his maximum aerobic speed and so on. But if you're doing interval training, and let's say you're doing 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, you're doing 20 of those sets. Or maybe you're doing eight seconds on, 12 seconds off, 60 times. When you have intervals like that, it's really easy every week or every session you do, two or three sessions a week, to change the time that you're working and change the time that you're resting. If you're just doing steady state stuff, there's only so many machines that you can change all the time, bike one day, box one day, run one day, skip one day. But when you have interval training, you have machines, you have work time, you have rest time, you have intensity level, you have set number that you can change. And with these parameters, it allows you to go into every single workout, ask the body a different question. So every time you go to the gym, if you just remember one thing from today, Ask the body a different question. Maybe you squat and then you go on the bike. Or maybe you go on the bike and then you go, you, you, you do some squats for conditioning afterwards. Remember, uh, as a friend of mine once said, you only have one arse, you can't sit on two horses. So if you're going to lift weights, my suggestion is you lift weights. If you're going to work on your cardiovascular fitness, a body composition through cardio machines, that's different. There is a blend, but again, it will dilute the, the improvement of, of, of neural system. So if you're looking to improve hypertrophy, I wouldn't necessarily be doing this sort of training together. If it's body composition, for sure you can. But understanding the exercise, the sequence of exercises, understanding the sets, the reps, the walk to rest ratio, the time under tension will allow you to change your cardio workout every single time. Now, the more muscle mass you activate, the more depletion of glycogen from these muscles that you activate, the improvement in insulin sensitivity and the better nutrient partition you get. If those are new terms to you, I suggest you look them up or watch some of the videos that I've recommended on my YouTube channel to break that down to you. But the more muscle mass you activate, in your workouts, so maybe one of the programs I do is called a debt hit program. There's another video on that where you do four exercises in a row, maybe a chin, maybe a deadlift, maybe a, um, a bench press, and then maybe a squat, and then you finish off on two minutes to three minutes of a high intensity on a machine, bike, ski, egg, rower, uh, versa climb, whatever it may be, is that will massively deplete you. When you deplete glycogen from a body composition point of view, you improve how well the body manages sugars thereafter and it optimizes uh, the breakdown of uh, adipocytes or, or fat cells on your body. So next thing here is tip number two. So tip number two, what we're looking at here is we need to know the time and the intensity needs to be preset. And what do I mean by that? As I mentioned, if you're going to get on the assault bike, and let's say you're going to do 10 minutes on the assault bike, and maybe those 10 minutes on the assault bike, it's going to be 30 seconds. 30 seconds, kill it. And 90 seconds, low level cruise. That's two minutes. We're going to do five of those. That's going to be a 10 minute workout. Now, what intensity do you need to do for those 30 seconds? And that's from a coaching point of view and from a, a training point of view, you need to know what you're at. If you're doing 500 watts, or 700 watts. It's very different than just going at 200 watts. So you need to align the intensity with the time to, to sustain quality throughout the workout. So for me, I normally do a challenge test with my athletes. A good, good average would be, so let's say I'm, I'm 100 kilos. For me, if I can do that, I should really be, for 10 seconds, I should be able to maintain around 1,000 watts. There is some really good stats on wattage in cycling. However, a salt bike is not an exact bike. They're professional cyclists, it's very different. So you're looking at around 
you can you can get a gauge of one kilo of body weight to what wattage that should be and sometimes it's 10 sometimes it's not 8 to 12 is what where the research is however look at that yourself it's person specific it's machine specific it's brand specific so we have here we have an assault bike and um, we have a Schwinn assault bike and we have a Rogue assault bike in the other gym. And the wattage I find very different. However, all my rowers are Concept 2 rowers, so it's pretty standard across the board. So if you are doing stuff like that, make sure you assess your client and make sure you know what wattage they should be at on that particular machine. Okay, so what I'll do is, the guys in the webinar, we're going to keep going for, for the other 30 minutes. Guys on Instagram, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you got some useful information. If you did find some information about this, please feel free to, to tag uh, on Lacey, share the content with your followers online. It's my goal to bring as much quality information to the people on my page as best I can, to grow a network of professionals that are focused on their clients, focus on results, focus on building this network of professionals to help people get in the best shape possible, not just giving them blanket statements, blanket programs, but spending time and attention to detail to help people, male, females, to get to where they need to get to in relation to this industry. If you want to find out more, I have that course, uh, Advanced uh, Fitness Training for Busy Executives. There's a 75% off till the end of the month. Also, my Strongman Training course is 75% off. I'm going to roll that now just to help coaches out there to upskill themselves on Strongman Training, corrective exercise, program design, and again, that's discounted and the code is supercharged on the site. So thank you so much, guys, on Instagram. Take care and have a great weekend. Great. Okay, let's keep going. So, so on this one here, we have a time and our tensity needs to be pretty set beforehand. We need to work out our personalized intensity indicator. And that's when, whatever machine it is bike, rower, ski egg, we know what intensity that person should have. So we do that, we find it out by testing them, how far they can run 100 meters, how far they can run 50 meters. So finding out how long it takes them will allow us to gauge yourself in whatever activity that we're doing. Then what we have is number three, variation in muscular recruitment is essential for sustained progress. And what I mean by that is maybe some days we're doing the ski egg when we're skiing down. Next day we're doing the, the, the um, Versa climber. Then the next day we're doing the rower. Then the next day we're doing the assault bike. Then the next day we're running. Then the next day we're biking. And then as we come back around again, we could do the same 10 seconds on, 20 seconds off, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, 60 times, and all those machines. And then we get around in two weeks' time to go again. We change the walk to rest ratio, go around them all again, change the walk to rest ratio, go all again. So we're changing the mechanics, we're changing the joints, we're changing the repetition, we're bringing down the volume, we're bringing up the intensity, and set by set, the body composition changes because we're you know, varying the muscle activation. We're balancing front side, back side, left side, lower body, upper body, and people are getting stronger, fitter, more resilient as they go on. But if we're doing the same running, the same biking day in and day out, it will wear on your client, on your body, and on your athletes. Every training session needs to be different. And I said this at the very start. The fourth tip here is every training session needs to be different. Regularity breeds economy. So the more regularly you do the same exercise, the more efficient the body's going to become at doing those particular movements. The movements need to be rotated all the time. The muscular system, the demand on explosivity, the slow twitch muscle fibers, fast twitch muscle fibers need to have a different stimulus constantly to allow posture, you know, maintain good balance and symmetry in the body, but not to overuse any joint or any muscle in particular. And the more we understand those fundamentals that I, that I talked about that are in multiple videos that I have online with the ISO circuit, with the female uh, dead hit program, with the, with the explosive power, you'll see how we put the program together and then you can play around with them yourselves to get the best benefits from your investment in your 40 minutes or your 20 minutes or your 60 minutes. And last we have here is fitness is specific. Now, I could go on on this, and that's why I put this at the last one. Fitness is specific to the person. Fitness is specific to the body type. Fitness is specific to the movement that you do. 
It's specific to the cardiovascular system, to the muscular system, to the stress in the body. You might be fit to hold something all day, but not fit to go up and down. You might be fit to slow down, but not fit to accelerate. So there's concentric, isometric, eccentric stress in the muscle. You might be fit to, to, to do something where you're holding a lot of the time, which is isometric, but not go to press up and down. So we need to make sure that fitness that we're looking for is specific to that person's body. And also, there's no real benefit to improving someone's fitness in areas and movements that don't lend themselves to everyday life. For example, I've got a lot of clients in their 50s and their 60s where their back barbell squat is not necessarily that important. So instead of using a back bar, straight bar, I use a safety bar. And why? Because I want them fit to be able to get the knee and the hip and the ankle mobility, but I don't necessarily need to put them in that position where sometimes they might find that more challenging. Now, do I want them to have that range of motion? For sure I do, but I find it much safer and more more higher benefit and lower risk to, to reward ratio for doing these exercises. Outside running, can people go over on their ankle? Can they fall down? Of course they can. Can they really sprint really fast and get a good workout from them? Yes. However, on a bike or on a ski area, it's a much more controllable area, better environment that they can really push themselves hard. I can see the heart rate in real time and the risk of injury is lower. So realizing that we it's fit is specific to the person, to the gender, to the movement, to the nervous system, to the recovery. People are pushing themselves really hard when really they don't even have the fitness and recovery to bounce back from that particular workout. So the next webinar I'm going to do is going to be what I call the maximum aerobic speed. And this is from Dan Baker. So if you're not familiar with Dan Baker's work, I strongly suggest you look him up. He's got tons of stuff. He actually has... Um, a velocity-based training method, of course, that he has on the play.com. So I suggest you check that out. Some really good information. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take his component that I've been using for the last number of years and how I put it in place with one of my athletes and with my general pop and how we put together the systems. But if you don't understand how to write the programs, I suggest you, you look at my other videos so you get an understanding of it and play around with it. Do it yourself, write your program, work out in the, doing the same methods, try it with some of your friends or clients or, or, or colleagues, and then implement it with your clients if you feel competent and comfortable with the information and you control it with the heart rate and the intensity. As again, just to remind you there, that course is going to be 75% off and the code is supercharged, all capital letters on onlyaceducation.com. And that's going to be available now to the end of the month. And that, that price there also includes VAT. Now, one of my biggest things is I would like to put people through workouts. So later this year, my goal is to, to aim towards October, where we're going to do two-day camps here in the OSI in Malahide. So we've got a huge cardiovascular area, or hit area. We've got a boxing, a jiu-jitsu area, and we've got one of the most um, equipped gyms in the country downstairs. So every bar in the world is nearly in the gym. We've got a lot of unique stuff special made for us but i think when you write program and then you go through them you get coached you can understand them much better so for people out there that are interested in getting into really good shape understanding how to train understanding how to coach people understanding how to periodize the program how to structure the program and even you just want to switch off yesterday i trained with mr universe lachlan gallon in the gym and for me it was great i just switched off i just okay coach you coach me i do whatever you say for me to do and it was really refreshing for someone else to give me cues and points and focus areas and exercise sequence and repetitions and tempo. I just switched off. I just did it. So if you're a professional out there, you're looking to upskill yourself, upskill your team, please feel free to let me know on, on my website. You can just put your interest in and I'll put your name into a list. And then when I have a course coming up specific to your requirements, I'll give you an email, let you know, but they will be here two days here. We're going to make sure we're training, we're in, in, integrating with the attendees. And it's, again, it's a networking opportunity, but great for coaches out there. Our business is based on coaching people and get better results. For some reason, we step away from coaches because we're in our business. This is a great opportunity for you to come, switch your brain off, get exposed to some new information, get exposed to some unique training tools, training equipment in an environment away from your gym, help you from your education and career point of view, but also for your team and the evolution of your business. Those videos again to check out online is the ISO circuit. You'll see that on YouTube. And I also have an hour long presentation on modified strongman training, the whole certification and all the additional tools you get with that, with the corrective exercise, with the program design, with the coaching groups and a few nutrition courses in there on top of that. Other than that, guys, I really appreciate your time on this on this Saturday uh, weekend. 
Hopefully you've got some information from that. If you can screenshot any information you've taken from today, share on Instagram or on Facebook. I'd really appreciate it to grow the network of coaches. And my goal is to give you guys usable information, not uh, apart from the waffle, quality information that you can implement with your clients, with your athletes, in your own training. So share the good word. Hopefully we can grow this network. And, and again, if there is topics that you want to get covered, please give me an email or a DM on Instagram. I'll get back to you and add that to the next content that we're going to do in the upcoming webinars. So other than that, guys, thank you so much for your time. And um, have a great weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.